The Journey to the West is one of China's four great classical novels. It's an ancient allegory for enlightenment. Though not the main character, the first seven chapters are dedicated to Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, a trickster type character who made it his mission to disrupt the order of heaven. He has a huge rivalry with Buddha and is known to wield a pole that can extend its length. He is incredibly powerful, he is mortal and one of the most invincible beings in creation. And with so much similar influences Buddhism has on the story of Jujutsu Kaisen, it is very clear that Sun Wukong is represented in the story of Jeji Akutami by none other than the calamity that is Toji Zenin. It is frequently mentioned by multiple characters that non-sorcerers are monkeys, and the strongest person in the story that reached heights without using sorcery is Toji. He is the peak of human capabilities and natural strength, shown in his maxed out senses and incredible speed and power. Sun Wukong is known as the king of monkeys. Not only is Toji someone who uses tools more than anything, also something that Wukong is known for. Toji once uses the special great tool called Roaming Cloud, which brings out the most of his strength due to it not needing any cursed energy, but only depending on physical strength. Sun Wukong also is known to summon a cloud that he can ride on his own, increasing his mobility, known as the Nimbus Cloud. Sun Wukong is known to have fought the Dragon King. Toji also was seen fighting a dragon in the story when he encountered Geto. But most importantly is the contrasting rivalry they both have with the enlightened one, with the one who ascended. To Wukong that was the Buddha, and to Toji that was Satoru Gojo. Toji Zenin, known later as Toji Fushiguro, was born in the Zenin clan, an ancient conservative clan of warriors that prioritize a very specific form of strength above all else, that being power through cursed techniques. Toji was born with a heavenly restriction that completely erased his cursed energy in exchange for extreme physical and sensory prowess, as well as removing the negative side effects of cursed energy. As a result, he was shunned and expelled from the clan, which caused him a trauma as he is exiled and mocked due to not fitting in, and he developed this goal to crush the clan, going on his own way and becoming an assassin known as Sorcerer Killer. Toji developed this goal as a twisted way of finding approval for his existence. This goal is all-consuming for Toji, when he is brought back his only thought is to go on a rampage against both sides, bearing his fangs at whoever's strongest. Toji is totally sociopathic. He feels no shame nor guilt in killing Amanai, a defenseless, innocent teenager he had just heard pouring her heart out. He even grins and taunts Geto about killing his best friend afterwards. Toji is called the one who left it all behind. It being his family, his feelings and purpose. It is not false to assume that Toji is purposeless due to how twisted his goals and ways are. He is extremely insecure about himself, only wanting to prove his strength, which is where Megumi probably got his lack of confidence from. He left his son because he felt he won't be able to raise him properly, which is somewhat true. He did sell him for money, but deep down, it was for the better of his future, that he is someone that the clan can appreciate and take care of unlike him, who thinks he can't even raise him properly without his wife. Toji is referred to as the one who threw everything away. It's revealed in his extras that after Megumi's mother died, he tried to stop caring about everything, which is why he distanced himself from his son. He often even forgets his name and never visited him, but despite this, it's made clear that while he can't admit it, he truly does love his son. His final thoughts are of him, and his last request is for Gojo to look out for him, ensuring he has a better father figure in his life. Toji, who I often call the Calamity, is literally that, 
Though he has so few appearances, he causes chaos whenever he is on paper. Rico's death, Geto's moral change, Gojo reaching the top, the death of Dagon and him hurting Megumi which in result led to the summoning of Maharaga followed by Sukuna killing thousands of people. This all and more is caused by Toji just appearing casually and going on a rampage. He doesn't realize it but his obsession with strength made him lose everything else. In his second fight against Gojo he could have easily ran away because he wasn't going to get paid in that encounter. But he chose to stay and fight. His pride and resolve to prove how powerful he is by taking down the strongest there is and proving himself led to his death eventually. Gojo and Toji are opposites, always meant to oppose one another. Toji eventually became a rogue mercenary who took great pleasure in killing sorcerers to prove his family wrong about him. Gojo is someone who holds basically the entire Jujutsu world on his back and wants to raise other sorcerers to be as strong or stronger than him. Gojo is the one groomed to be superior from childhood. Toji was made to feel inferior. Gojo uses his power selflessly, almost always making himself a tool for the sake of others. Toji is someone who acted selfishly for the sake of money, pride, is showing other people's values for his own twisted ones. However, they both have a unique understanding of one another. Toji says the first and last time anyone was aware of his presence when he visited Gojo as a kid. Gojo is defined by how untouchable he is and the first person to ever put a scratch on him was Toji. There is actually a lot about Toji and Gojo that is similar making them poised to understand each other. Toji is also a one-of-a-kind genius, specifically because he was born with a body that eradicates cursed energy. Toji was always powerful. He was just mocked and belittled because he didn't fit into the mold of Jujutsu society. Toji is the extreme result of Gojo's rampant individualism. In a different way than Sukuna is, Toji is strong but his strength never really matters. He failed to protect Megumi's mother, he was going to sell Megumi to the clan, he only ends up all alone because of his decision to value strength above all else and throw everything away. Gojo is also someone who despite being the strongest, fails to protect others. He wasn't able to save Keto from his breakdown, he failed to save Riko after that. For both characters, even though they believe the only good thing about themselves is their strength, strength is not everything to them. And that's what both of their characters' arcs are about, finding value in oneself beyond power and status. Megumi is the connecting knot that ties between them. Megumi can be everything that Toji couldn't. And while it is irresponsible that he gave away his son, deep down he was out of love. Toji's most redeeming quality was his affection for his son and his genuine wish for Megumi to have a blessed, better life than he did. Gojo went out of his own way to protect Megumi from the Zenin family. They are both opposites in so many ways, but Megumi is their connecting thread. Both Gojo and Toji want to give him a better world and a better life than the one they grew up in. As I mentioned in my Megumi analysis video, which you should check out if you haven't, Megumi is the ideal sorcerer and person that we follow in the story of Jujutsu Kaisen. He is the center of contradictions, hopes, interests and ideals of so many characters in the story. And through exploring him, we got more insight into what other characters see in him and wish for him, helping in understanding them as well. Toji named his son Megumi, which means blessings. Megumi is the only thing that Toji cares about. He mentioned that he decided to not respect himself or anyone else and he chose to live like that, abandoning everything and even discarding his pride. But that was not true because the family he left still poses a huge problem for him, desperately wanting to prove himself. 
he is constantly thinking about the clan and how he can show them how worthy he is, which eventually led to his death, because he warped his usual self in order to reaffirm his identity. In the son he abandoned, but can't forget about, that even his last thoughts were about him, and the last words he said were informing Gojo about him, in hopes he will take care of him. Toji seems to not be able to escape from his chains, his chains being the blood running through his veins. Even though he was outcasted and chose to literally leave everything, he still finds himself back where he was, bound by both love and hate to others and himself. And that was his curse. But he was blessed with a certain someone that he can at least rest assured knowing he will be someone of worth. When Toji asked Megumi about his name, and the latter replied with Fushiguro instead of Zenin, that was the ultimate salvation for him, expressing that that's good for him, even though it goes against what he envisioned for him, when he made the deal in handing him over. There is definitely still more to Toji and Megumi, the author himself said so, is there still something that Toji is planning? According to what Gojo said, that Megumi is Toji's trump card against the clan. Is Toji somehow going to appear again? Even though it's unlikely and would be repetitive and ruin his ending, but Jujutsu is known for being extremely unpredictable and crazy, which is what makes it so interesting and unique. I am looking forward to see what Jiji has in plans for us in the future of his story. And I think you are too, considering you reached this far into the video. So comment down below, what are your thoughts on Toji's purpose and story, and which character you would like to see an analysis of in the future. Many thanks for watching.